In a previous video, I started making a screw on wood screw chuck for my Ramator wood lathe, and that's to replace the one that got damaged when turning a plum tree bowl blank. So far, I did some drilling and boring. Basically, all I did was uh, make a hole in a lump of streptonium. So let's continue now that you're all up to speed and you don't have to uh, waste your time and watch that first video in this series. Now the first thing I need to do is make that boring hole a little bit bigger. So the outside of the spindle nose thread is about 29.7 millimeter. And the area next to the thread is about uh, 26 and a half millimeter. Now there is probably some fancy way or tool to determine the needed hole size. And that's something a professional would use, but uh, I'm just going to guesstimate it as the true amateur screw up that I am. A whole lot of swarf got stuck between the chuck and the spindle. And after cleaning it out I decided it would be a good idea to plug the spindle through hole. This way none of the swarf would end up in the change gears. So I ended up making that bore about 27 millimeter. If it is too small I will spend ages to remove enough material and the uh, thread will end up uh, rather sharp. And if the hole is too big the thread won't be as strong as possible. I just hope I uh, guessed it just right. The thread on the spindle nose is uh, 14 TPI and that's a bit strange to see imperial thread on a European lathe that isn't uh, that old. The gauge I used is 55 degrees widward. So I tried both uh, 55 and uh, 60 degree inserts but I don't see much of a difference. So I decided to gamble on a 60 degree pointy bit. Better a loose thread that fits than uh, not fitting at all. Good news, according to this table I should be able to make a 14 TPI thread. That is, if I can install the correct change gears. The seal on the input shaft is leaking a little bit, so there's always some oil in the bottom of the gear cover. I guess it's something to look at uh, later. Changing gears on this lathe is usually a bit of a struggle, as the fit on these Chinese gears isn't uh, that great. But uh, in this case it wasn't too bad, as most of the gears have been used before, so the holes in the keyways were all fitting this time. Alright, I will speed this up a little. But it uh, took me at least in half an hour to get these installed. It must be nice to have a lathe with a gearbox. But honestly, I don't need to change gears that often. But it would be nice to have some automatic uh, carriage feed for a change. A little bit of lubrication, the same black stuff that I use on my blue cardigan lathe. And uh, that part of the job is done. And here's my 20 mm threading bar. And I'm going to use one of these fake Mitsubishi inserts. With some positive rake that I bought from eBay. And they work better than the ones that I got from Banggood.
a prospective three-day close-up with my Endon Start inspection microscope, just for fun. And I will compare the insert with this uh, after I'm done with the threading job. And now it's time to replace the boring bar with a threading bar. And I will tighten up the set screws later when I have determined the amount of stick out that is needed. Next I need to set up the angle on the compound slide and the way I see it there are uh, three possible positions here. I could set the uh, compound to the rear like this but uh, in this position I don't really have enough cross slide travel and the dial on the compound slide will be hard to read and uh, operate. Setting it to the front like this is also an option, but then I would be cutting on the wrong side of the insert when I'm feeding out the compound slide. So I have decided to set the compound to the left like this. I used that uh, position before. This will require more tool overhang, but at least uh, the dial will be easy to read and uh, operate. And I would be cutting on the correct side of the insert, or what I see as the correct side of the insert. And that's cutting while pushing against the headstock uh, thrust bearing. I set my protractor to a bit more than 60 degrees and I'm using a diamond hone to reference the angle against the cross slide. Tightening up the little M6 bolts. They are a bit uh, delicate if you ask me. I'm using a square to set up the angle on the uh, threading bar. Now I'm determining the uh, amount of stick out needed. I know it's a lot, but I don't want to run the carriage against the uh, chuck jaws. Setting the lathe to the slowest speed, 115 rpm, is still faster than I like. Setting the cross slide dial to zero and uh, dialing in a bit of a cut with the compound slide. Engaging the half nuts and uh, I should be ready to go. I'm reversing the motor and uh, backing out the tool again. The slave doesn't have a threading dial, so I will have to keep the half nuts engaged for the whole threading operation. That looks like a decent scratch. Let's move the tool a bit further, so I will have some room to check with the threading gauge. Bingo! On the money, as expected. Let's continue, there's a whole lot more passes to make before the thread is uh, finished. The thread I'm cutting is a whole lot longer than needed, and some of it will have to be turned away for the spindle register and to cap off the other side for the wood screw. But I did not have the guts to single point thread into a blind hole. I never did that before under power, and to me it looked like a good way to screw up a perfectly usable Chinesium lathe. But maybe it could be done with a left hand uh, threading tool. Maybe something to try in the future. So far the thread looks and feels rather jaggedy. I think it's time I started to use some cheap-ass recycled 15W40 motor oil. 
that I normally use on my old uh, car. It seems to work just as good as that can of uh, treading oil that I got when I bought a lathe. Um, I see no need to buy any more overpriced loop. And if you ask me, people can be such suckers when it comes to oil marketing. Let's continue the shit show before I start ranting about oils. And then the sun decided to mess with my recordings. It's always something. If it isn't that damn rooster, it's the sun messing with my plans for artistic greatness. And it's not like I can close the barn curtains. So I guess I will have to find something else to do for now. But no sunbathing. That just gives you skin cancer. I decided to take apart the woodlay spindle so I can use it to check the fit on the thread I'm making. And this is where I really fuck up my wood lathe. I forgot the spindle has a left hand thread. I can be so stupid after I had that little brain fart last winter. And then I fucked it up even more. I noticed the pulley got rather stuck and that wasn't the case when I had it apart last year. And then finally I remembered the left hand thread. But the damage was already done as I would find out later. I had to use a puller to remove the pulley. And I even had to turn a little plug for the spindle that would fit through the pulley. So what's the result of all that stupidity? I think I damaged the thread on the end of the spindle when I hit it with the impact socket. But that's not the worst of the problem. And I think it will still be okay. When I accidentally tightened the nut, it pushed the aluminium pulley forwards, damaging the thread on the nut that sets the preload on the bearings. And that is why the spindle got so stuck. And that is the real problem. Because how am I going to spin off this bearing preload adjustment nut without a spindle lock? It's not like it's easy to hold by hand. When the thread for the bearing preload got pinched, it also damaged the aluminium pulley. And that is why I needed the puller to get it off. Last time I had the spindle apart, it would just slide off. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. Grind away the pinched portion of the thread, and then hopefully I can remove the locking ring and take apart the spindle. Next I'm planning to clean up my grinding work on the lathe and then make a ring or bushing that will sit against the uh, thread. And of course the pulley will also have to be modified to make room for the uh, bushing. Since I fucked it up myself, I will also have to unfuck it myself. Because it's not like uh, Key Fenner is getting things done just around the corner. But I wouldn't mind hearing any ideas you guys might have, as we have well established I'm not the uh, brightest bulb in the old barn. Well that's it for this week's shit show. It's not what I was planning to do, but it is what it is and I will probably have to come up with something else to do for next week. But rest assured, it won't be any wood turning. So see you next week when the shit show will continue, hopefully.